<laughs> Hi everyone! Waiting to make sure that the audio is okay. <laughs> Sorry for being a couple minutes late. Uh, Indy decided that he needed my assistance cleaning things up. Now, yeah, he's not feeling very well. Hi everyone! Waiting to make sure that the audio is okay. <laughs> It's not great. It's not great. Let's try this one. Let me check this one. Because I think the other camera, the other audio is better. It's not great. Not great. All right, this one is better. I'm further away from it down here, but let me know how um, how that goes. I'm waiting to hear myself. <laughs> All right, this one is better. All right, I'll just go with it because it's like there's a like a minute or so delay between what's live like here in my house and then what comes through on YouTube. So sometimes it takes a while to figure that out. But hello everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the April 2023 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. Uh, this month, oh, <laughs> this month we're going to dye some yarn inspired by one of my favorite spring flowers, daffodils. And I specifically picked this picture of daffodils for a few reasons. Uh, one, there's a variety of yellow, orange, and peach hues, but it's also a floral picture where it is not predominantly green. Now, I have beautiful daffodils that are currently blooming in my yard, but if I was going to go and photograph those, there would be a lot of green. And I really wanted yellow to be the star because it's been a while, for yellow to have its moment. Now, we might bring in some green, but I had it be a really minor color in the photo. Well, I mean, I didn't take the photo, but I picked a photo where green could be the minor color, so that way it gives you the option. Um, however, you can bring more green in if you want. There's no problem with that. I'm gonna make this smaller again so I can sit in a less unnatural um, angle. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, this is a dial long, which means that you are invited and in fact encouraged to dye your own yarn inspired by the same inspiration photo. All you have to do to be featured in the dial long recap, which will take place three to five weeks from now, which I'll share as like a pre-filmed video showing the finished yarn from today. Uh, all you have to do is share the yarn that you've dyed on Instagram using the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong or you can share it on as a photo comment on the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. So yes, it's going to be happy yarn. We might swatch, I mean, it's not going to be all of my yellows, but a bunch of yellows, uh, and we're going to have some fun. Um, I am a little bit stressed out about Indy. <laughs> so Indy is my almost 12 year old dog and uh, he, yeah, it's, he's not been eating today, which is not typical for him. Um, he's clearly feeling nauseous, which is something we've gone through in the past. And so, uh, yeah, but he just threw up a bunch of water because he was drinking, so I wasn't that worried. And I mean, he was interested in Cheerios that were on the floor. So it's, but he's not interested in like his normal food. So, oh, that's what I needed to do. I am having groceries delivered and if there is still time, I'm going to add some chicken because he'll probably eat that. Um, so sorry, I meant to do this before. <laughs> uh, I meant to do this before I started, and I'm glad I was talking about it because then I remembered. <sighs> Plain chicken breast. Um, The smallest sure. So um, 
sounds good. Making sure that that added it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Oof, busy, busy day. Okay, yeah, so that's the uh, Indie Palms, poor Indie Palms update. Thankfully, I'm, it's more stressful because you don't want him to uh, ruin carpets and furniture. Not that he gets on furniture much, but still, we don't want anything to get ruined. So that's the stressful part, but I'm not yet worried about his like health, fingers crossed. Um, because normally if this happens, then he'll feel better like this evening or something. So, um, so when he's sick, I need to give him, um, we don't want the fat from the chicken thigh, thighs. And so that's why we need the chicken breasts. It's just, I didn't need like a three pound pack of it, you know, because he won't eat like even a whole breast uh, for one meal. And then we'll also give him ripe white rice, which usually he adores and so then he will ingest something that will help whatever stomach things are going on but then if we need to tomorrow um we can take him to get a nausea shot at the vet so this has happened before but anyway uh yarn let's talk yarn so i have pulled a few different yarn bases for today and i think like one of the stars today is going to be, is it peach blush? I think it's peach blush. I always mix up like peach blush with like creamy peach, which was the Wilton color. And so sometimes I'll like accidentally call them the wrong, the wrong names, but I'm pretty sure the Dharma color is peach blush. Uh, and so I'm planning on using that as like a bit of an accent and then a few different yellows. Cause I, again, I want yellow to be the star. And if I'm in the mood for it, which I'm not going to promise that I am. Uh, if I'm in the mood, then we might do some sage leaf speckling. Uh, and so that's the green that I decided would work well. That was the color that I felt looking closely at these stems. And so that's the color that I pulled. Um, yeah, the, the yeah, the, uh, yeah. Um, and so what other announcements? Oh, Okay, so I have it pinned in the chat, but you can pre-order the 2023 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series yarn. I would say I have dyed about 95% of all of the yarn, um, and in early May is when I'm gonna start shipping things out. I still have to finish making all the extras and stuff, but we're in good shape with the yarn. <laughs> um, and so it's a lot of fun. It's a similar kind of event to Hanukkah where every night, I believe it's starting June 5th. I don't remember off the top of my head right now. Um, but every night of the week of the spring mini skein mini series, there'll be a new yarn dyeing video uh, with a premiere. So the live chat so we can hang out and react to the video. And if you pre-order yarn, you'll get a five mini skein set for 100 grams total that was dyed in one of the nights. Uh, and so it's going to be so, so much fun. The colors are amazing. I'm really, really proud of what I've created. And uh, a brief spoiler moment. I should have like a, a spoiler thing. Brief spoiler moment. But um, the uh, theme is uh, the inspiration for the colors comes from one of my favorite video games. And so that's all I'll say right now. <laughs> Um, what was I going to say? So that is the link. And there are some different add-ons. Currently still, you need to buy one of the mystery like mini skein sets to also get one of the add-on skeins. Uh, but the add-ons include sock blanks, yarn mops, and then there's a like colorway, a special colorway I'm dying for this series. Yay! I'm glad you like daffodils. So I think my favorite spring flower is technically Glory of the Snow. It's like the little blue flowers that often you'll find at the bottom of daffodils and stuff. Um, I planted like a million of them when we moved in and some of them have taken, so they do come up every year. Uh, but not all the bulbs I planted have done well, but we have a bunch of daffodils. Um, but I still feel like not all of them have come back, but yeah. Um, oh, and the other thing, hi Sanford. I hope you got, um, I messaged you this morning. 
Uh, <laughs> and wow, thank you for joining all the way from Israel. Um, the other thing that hopefully I'll be able to put this in the chat is that Nitpix is having a sock yarn sale right now with uh, bare sock yarns and some like dyed, hand dyed, kettle dyed, all those different types that they have um, yarn up to 30% off. It's priced as marked and this might still stack with the like buy 10 skeins, use the, I don't remember if the code is like my value pack, my yarn pack something like that. The code is on the sales tab. Uh, and so with the last bear yarn sale that did stack. So it's worth, um, it's worth checking that out. Um, but yeah, I put my affiliate link in the video description. And then I have links to like, actually I didn't link specifically to the yarn lines I pulled today, but, um, let me see. I had a bag. Where's the bag of yarn? Uh, here it is. Well, it's not exciting as a bag of yarn, but it's a bag of yarn labels. <laughs> I think it's my yarn pack this year, and I think it's an additional 10% when you buy 10. Okay, so I've pre-soaked, and I'm not sure how much we'll get to, pre-soaked the skein of gloss fingering from Knit Picks, which is 70% merino wool, 30% uh, silk. I pre up the skein of Bear Galileo yarn, which is 50% merino wool, 50% viscose from bamboo. I was looking for, I'm sure somewhere I have a fingering weight, like cellulose um, wool blend somewhere, and I couldn't find it. Uh, and so, but I did find one last skein of Galileo. That might be my last one. Um, we've got some stroll which is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, and Bear Stroll is on sale um, with the, the yarn sale. Um, I've also got some Swish DK, 100% superwash merino wool. This Swish DK isn't on sale with the yarn sale, but Swish Fingering is. And then, ah, I also pulled down one of Wool to Die For's multi nep yarns. Do I have a photo? Of course, I didn't set up for web browsing today. What did that do? Aha! That's the yarn. That worked. So, um, <laughs> to pop it in briefly, it is a bear yarn that has blue, pink, yellow, and green naps in it. And so the yellows likely won't pop very much uh, because of, if we're going to dye it, like mostly yellows, but the other colors might pop. And so I thought that that would just be a fun one to throw in. And that yarn is 85% superwash merino wool, 15% donegal nap. Hello. Um, oh, and I can double check. Me sale. Yes, the, the build your own yarn pack at Knit Picks. The coupon code is my yarn pack. Um, and you get 10% off with 10 plus skeins. It's supposed to be like select yarn lines, but it does seem to work on a lot of bare yarn. Um, and so you get 10% off your personalized yarn pack. So the, I didn't check to see if it stacks with this sale. It did stack with the last sale. Um, because you can only use one coupon code per order, but if the yarn is marked down, then coupon codes tend to work. So I don't know. But actually, we have, I might later unbox some Netflix yarn um, as we go. But let's go to the countertop because I feel like I've been talking forever. <laughs> uh, oh, right. I need to set up a monitor. This is probably going to die on me. Don't forget to like everybody. Um, turn the volume all the way down. Aha! So I'm like, I want to make sure I can see the chat. When I'm up here, even though my eyes aren't good enough to see that. But let's go pull, see some of the dye colors that I pulled for today.
my head is also in the clouds because I'm working on a brand deal that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, okay, so here are a bunch of yellows, which like, I'm probably gonna be drawn more to like the sunflower or duckling, um, but I've also pulled honey mustard, brilliant yellow, fluorescent lemon, uh, and golden poppy. And the only real reason for pulling that fluorescent lemon in, which is gonna be much too bright, is that don't like butterflies and other insects see flowers and know where the nectar is because of like, they're seeing, it's not necessarily fluorescent, but they're seeing things in the UV range that we can't see. There's like a magic school bus about that once back in the day. Um, and then I also have peach blush and sage leaf with me. Um, no, I'm not going to share details yet because like, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's a sponsored video with a brand, but I think that many of you guys might be able to put two and two together if you're in my Facebook group. <laughs> But so this video is not sponsored. Uh, whenever I have like a brand sponsor a video, I try to make it like really clear. It's one of the reasons why I changed, well, you, instead of having lab partners, I used to call it um, like sponsor an episode of Dipot Weekly. But then when I had some sponsorships from some small businesses, it made it confusing. So I'm like, I need to make it clearer when it's a commercial sponsorship versus an individual wanting a shout out. So the lab partner videos, um, it's when it's an individual wanting a shout out. And so therefore, when I say a brand sponsored, it means that they paid me to include something in the video. And I do also try to, I mean, it's FTC rules anyway, but I try to disclose when I um, get things for free as well. Okay, let's take a photo of these colors. Ooh, that looks, that palette is just so pretty. Um, after midnight, yes, you, you are excused. <laughs> you are more than excused. So I have to decide, okay, cause I've got a pot heating up and cause I think I might want to dip dye a little bit, potentially with like brilliant yellow and maybe golden poppy or something. Um, and I'm trying to decide if I want to do the like swatching on how many skeins. That's what I'm trying, I haven't decided. I suppose we could just do it on one. I have so much yarn free soaking over here. Which yarn is which? Okay. Let's see. And I hooked different yarns together because that made my life easier. All right, I am going to go, yes, I'm going to go take this yarn, a skein of Nitpick Stroll, and add it to, from a pre-soak that had no acid and dunk it in a pre-soak that did have acid. very much liquid on here anymore but I did a quick dunk I think I will want to add a little bit of water in here though oh but I'm torn you guys uh, yeah okay I'm gonna get the pre-soak this is technically for another video I'm not planning if you see the blank, I'm not planning on dying a sock blank today. I have that for another purpose. Uh, it's spring break right now, but my kids are with my mother-in-law. Okay, good. Now things are more wet. My kids are with my mother-in-law, so that's why I can finally stream. Okay. Thank you. I'm 
I'm glad you liked the inspiration photo. You do duckling, brilliant, yellow, golden poppy. Yeah, that's probably where I'll go. I've got my handy dandy notebook. I don't know why, like, I haven't seen Blue's Clues in years, and yet I always reference it. Okay, I'm not going to put on, oh, yarn mop. You know what? I'll tap things out on here. Is that what I'm going to do? Yeah. Uh, I didn't think this through. For now, we'll tap colors out on here, and so that's what we'll do, and we'll just wash my hands. <laughs> Oh man, I was like so prepared, so, so prepared, like pre-soaked yarn last night and everything. And then my poor dog threw me off my game this morning. I just can't seem to get a break this year. Okay. Let's start. Let's go with the brightest first. I'm going to take a little pinch of fluorescent lemon. And I'm going to tap it out onto the yarn, which honestly, when it's more pigmented, it's giving a beautiful golden color. Ooh, that's so pretty. Again, it's probably brighter than what I want. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Okay. Let's see. Brilliant yellow. I guess I have six. Six yellows that I was going to look at today. Which, yep, some of it moved to another spot. But some of the color value is a little bit the same. But the spread of our... Um, fluorescent lemon is way brighter. But see, when you have a yellow a little more concentrated, then it starts to go orange. Actually, should I? Should move you guys a little closer. Sorry. There we go. Okay, now I believe that sunflower yellow is a primary. That's a fair amount. <laughs> um, I think that it might just be a single pigment, which is what makes it technically a primary. But it is a bit of a softer, it's definitely a softer yellow concentrated it almost starts to feel a little bit brown but as far as like a yellow goes if you're going to use it at a lower depth of shade it is a lot less bright it would be like when the daffodils start to like wilt and go brown a little bit i'm how that compares with duckling But look how orange that powder looks. But duckling to me, ooh, I don't think I've ever used, tried to use duckling super concentrated. And so when you put the powders on, that's what happens. But so duckling also is ultimately a very soft yellow. It would be a great color um, for a tunnel that you wanted to do at a baby yellow kind of um kind of tone, but it's definitely a little bit more orange than our others right now. Yeah, so I'm wiping my hands on one paper towel, then on a wet paper towel, then on a dry paper towel. All right, let's do honey mustard, which I think is going to feel much more orange compared to the other colors that we've used thus far. 
um, like at the lighter edge of the honey mustard, that's where you almost can feel some of the deepest notes from like the brilliant yellow. So it still feels yellow when it is less saturated. Like if I tap this out and let it move, it definitely gives us more, um, more yellow vibes, but more concentrated, it does bring crossover into the orange. The orange family. Okay, now golden poppy, I think, should be even more orange than honey mustard. Oh, that's funny, it disappeared. <laughs> it's one of those, you know how there's sometimes pigments that, like, it takes them a minute to kind of, like, show through when they dissolve, they kind of disappear at first, and then they show, get, show up? All right, I'm going to give this, I think, five minutes before I take a picture, um, which will give me time to write everything down, uh, because that is sort of coming into its own a little bit. can draw this. I'm going to do me and this is uh, duckling honey you know like honey mustard has a color but not so much a condiment um you're obligated to like duckling because you have duck in your name online. <laughs> yes, so Toby asked um, if what I'm doing here is testing the colors to figure out what I want to work on. And I would say the answer there, I'm going to up your exposure because this is the problem with daytime streams, which I prefer doing. But when the sun goes behind a cloud, um, here we go. That changes the exposure that I need. That is much better. I was like, it's looking too dark. So yeah, what I'm doing is twofold. One, creating one of our colorways because this is going to be yellows, like different like depths of yellow and white. And so this is by its own right going to be one of the colorways that we use today. Although I might add a little something else. I haven't decided yet. Um, I might add a little bit of peach blush to this. So this is, yeah, but it's also just because I haven't compared the yellows in one place. And I like to do crude swatches like this because it helps. Um, it can help you decide when you want to use the dry powders, how they might behave. So for example, duckling is this beautiful soft yellow, right? But maybe if you're going to use it in the powder and it's too heavy, then it goes more almost Aztec gold in the center. And maybe you don't want that gold. And so then maybe you might be more inclined to use sunflower yellow, um, which is more muted towards the center, but less orange. And so it can sort of help, I guess, with that. And so that's one reason why I love crude swatches and I reference these all the time um, when I'm dyeing yarn. And like, especially when I've done the big ones like with all my greens that I have um, and things like that because uh, then I can see like okay uh, these two greens from this brand look pretty much identical even though they might at a 1% depth of shade look very different uh, but when you're dealing with the dry dye powder directly that 1% depth of shade doesn't matter as much because if you want the color deeper you just add more powder um, so the sunflower, I'm not picking up a lot of blue notes. I'm really feeling more brown versus green there. 
Um, so it's not necessarily feeling treacherous. I mean, I think like down there, maybe it could, but you're seeing some of the like pan, the silver of the pan show through. Um, so the other note is that duckling ends up, even after tapping it in, there's some little itty bitty specks here that are really quite pleasing, which would be another thing I would note about the color, um, which I'm sure I will forget to mention in the recap. I'm taking a picture just in case. All right, one more minute. But I think that the golden poppy is showing its true character really nicely now. It does have like a good amount of pigment. It's just at first when I tapped it in, it's like what hyacinth does. It's like, where did it go? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's just a little bit funny. Can I see these? No. Okay, I'm going to take some photos. and photos with just the die names on the other side so I remember in case I forget to look at my notes. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, getting my steamer mask going. That's why I dunked this one in acid because I don't think I'm going to do immersion dyeing for this one. Um, but we're going to flip it now. But actually, I guess I can't see the, okay, if I tilt it like that, then yes, you can see. Let's see. Okay, so to recap, we have sunflower yellow, brilliant yellow, fluorescent lemon, golden poppy, honey mustard, and duckling. And I like a lot of them. I think I'm inclined with golden poppy, brilliant yellow, Those are the two that I'm most drawn to, but maybe depending on, maybe also some honey mustard actually. So like these three here, but with these two golden to colors at a much lesser amount overall. Golden poppy feels a little bit more pink, whereas the honey mustard feels like a very saturated yellow. Um, and so it still feels very gold in there. But I'm gonna flip this over and see what the reverse side looks like. Okay. Cause like the colors are probably striking a bit already and I might not be adding colors in the exact same place, but my gut for this colorway is going to be the follows or like as follows. Um, as the steamer basket goes a little bit out of control. And I'm putting my respirator back on, so I'm going to be muffled. Okay, but because I was debating adding some peach blush to this, and I don't think I want to do that. But what I do want to do is finish it off with some more of these colors. Which I don't always add things to the other side. And things might mix and blend out some and that is also totally fine by me but I kind of want to keep some of the white. Uh, I think Hmm. I think your sunflower and your duckling. Not that it matters if I get the wrong one in the wrong spot. Like that's not something that I'm worried about here because this is just a very organic like flowers and white kind of colorway. But I don't play with all, oh, that's a lot of dye. I don't play with all my yellows very much. I think I was surprised by like how brown sunflower can feel at times, but uh, yes, you are honey mustard.
because then we're going to go steam set this skein, and this is just going to be as it is. But I don't always add more color to the other side, but if I had started with uh, more acid, I might have been able to push these colors through more, but because I had acid, then um, I just want a little more coverage. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, this color initially just disappears. That's so funny. Okay. But this is now going to go into my steamer basket. And I'm going to carry this with me. And the colors are going to touch each other. Oh. There's like so much yellow pouring out because there's so much water in there. So we've got a little bit of some yellow left, which honestly, I'm not going to throw this away. I'm going to dump this into the kettle I have warming up. Dissolve some golden poppy, I think. Cloudy, and I'm going to take off my mask now. Or in a moment, dry my hands first. The dye is a little bit cloudy, so it isn't really, uh, it's more, it seems like more of a suspension, but we will be eventually adding this to hot water. Um, and I want to do a dip dyed colorway, and then we'll do some other kind of colorway using maybe a lot of brilliant yellow with speckles of other colors. Okay, I'm trying to decide, and you know how I'm going to actually decide which colorway we're going to do? And I'll take a look at the comments as I sit down for a moment. Um, but I'm thinking I definitely want to dip dye the multi naps, and I want to dip dye one other yarn with it, and I just haven't decided which one. Um, let's see. Let's go... Hello. Um, you could do with one yellow. You could definitely do like a lot and get a lot of these different yellow shades with just brilliant yellow. Having it be like more saturated and less saturated in areas. Um, that would be very fun. Yay for making a live stream. Okay. What did I want to. I wanted to get a sip of a beverage. But, oh, I wanted to figure out which other color. But I guess I sat down just to sit down for a minute. Because um, the kettle is still heating up. 
Um, yeah, so I really, okay. So I want to get one more skein. I used one of the strolls. So right now I have two strolls, two switch, a gloss, and a Galileo, and then the other guy. Um, oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to look at my shop. This is how sometimes I decide what yarn base is to do. I'm going to search my shop for yellow, um, which was not very helpful. Um, no. Well, that's goofy because I'm pretty sure there's more yellow than that. Okay. Which I know you can't see what I'm doing, but, or maybe because I sold the yellow speckled. Oh, fine. Maybe I don't have a lot of yellow. I just have one like kind of like semi speckly yellow colorway. Uh, okay, yeah, I think I sold the other, like, bright, more bright yellow. Fine, then it doesn't matter. Um, so sometimes I go through and I look at my shop, <laughs> and I see, like, if I'm like, okay, in DK I have a ton of pinks. So if I want to do something that is, like, very pink all over, then maybe I don't use DK, because I have a lot of pink there right now. And so sometimes that helps me pick the colors I'm going to use. Um, definitely going to add in some peach. Um, that's one of the colors I plan to use. I just, I debated on the swatchy one, adding some peach and maybe a little bit of green on there. I'm going to do that, I think, eventually, but next is going to be more of a pure kind of color. And so I think what I'm going to do is, um, goodness, I think we'll dip dye the multi next, and then I'm going to set up a poll. Why not? Uh, start a poll. Okay. Okay. So there's two options. The first one, um, the sock 7525 is stroll, and then the 100% superwash merino DK is swish. But I put it that way in case some of you don't know what stroll and swish are off the top of your head. Um, and so either of these plans would go really well with what I have, but usually when I dip dye yarn, I only do 200 grams at a time. I could do 300. Um, that wouldn't be like a huge issue. Um, so yeah, but it's nice to see what you guys want to see. And so far it is overwhelmingly DK. We will dye more sock yarn today. I promise. Um, Sometimes when I'm doing multiple colorways like this, whoops, <laughs> I lost my focus. Where'd we go? Um, <sighs> this is when I could use a, um, this is when I could use an assistant. <laughs> I could use like a, a DP. I need like a producer, a director of photography to help me manage all the technical stuff while I focus on the creative. Um, but yeah, Peach is definitely going to be in there. Okay. Uh, it looks like that you guys are very much wanting me to do the DK, and so that's um, what we'll do. So I promise that there will be Peach. I absolutely promise. Um, we're just going to wait. <laughs> that's going to come third because we're going to do at least start the dip dyed second um and i'm going to move this is that uh i think the golden poppy that is not well dissolved please don't spill that rebecca um and we're gonna bring out the hot plate oh no
No, don't worry. That wasn't like a big, awful spill. Um, but my Americolor uh, 50 uh, color set just spilled everywhere. <laughs> oh, am I on the wrong? I went to the wrong one. Hello. You can see my legs. Um, there we go. Don't worry, I will, ooh. Am I gonna be able to reach? We'll manage, we'll manage. Okay. Making sure the handles are not too warm. Gonna turn the hot plate on. And wanna make sure, okay, I'm gonna adjust your camera. Okay, of course. This means I'll have to adjust the face camera next time I sit down as well. But I'll adjust that so that way you guys can see into this pot better. And then I'll move the camera once I'm going to bring like a catering steam pan on so you can see that nicely as well. Um, daffodils. Let's make you a little smaller. Yes. Oh, I am fine. I just dumped out. I'll show you guys what I dumped. While I was taking out the hot plate, I dumped this. So my nifty 50 food coloring set spilled and the colors all fell out. Because I was not smart. Um, You'd love to see a video when I'm in a horrible mood and swearing up a storm. <laughs> well, since I know some kids watched my videos with their parents, there will unlikely be a video of me swearing a lot. There is a video, at least one video, where I um, use like a train whistle to cover up my swears. Okay, where is... I have been losing everything lately. Oh my god, I just found it. I was going crazy looking for my one liter, like, graduated container. And here it is, um, storing, like, all the spoons and stuff. I'm Because I needed the container I normally use for that for something else. None of the food coloring was open, and so that was what my fear was. Okay, and now I'm going to show you guys the worst way to store a dye stock in the universe. And that's in one of these containers. I'm actually going to take this to the stove because I want to do this at the stove and not on the counter because it always makes a mess. But I want to see how much of the brilliant yellow I have. to dissolve more brilliant yellow because I don't want to use that one. Okay, there's two things that I did that were not great. 
here. <laughs> the first was I stored the dye stock in a container, and that's because for the Browns video that I shared, what, yet yesterday? Did that come out yesterday? I filmed that a couple weeks ago, and I wanted the dye stocks that I made to be in like a more stable container than some of the plastic cups I often use, like the one that I have up on the counter right now. Um, and then I was too tired at the end to like transfer the dye into like a squeeze bottle. So I just put a cover on and left it there and I used it for some other things. Um, and I was like, you know, we're just going to go with it. But I've left it inside a plastic shoe box on a shelf by windows that are very sunny. So there was, the dye got a bunch of light and some warmth from the sun over there. We've had some really, really warm days last week in New England. And so that meant that something, um, some kind of microbe decided to grow a little bit. And so we saw like a little colony floating in there, which is a little bit gross, but it's making me realize that maybe the guar gum solutions, because I usually have them stored in the kitchen and not underneath the cabinet where I normally store dye stocks, uh, that was a problem. So I think the cold underneath a cabinet in my, um, like under a sink is where I normally get the doors store dye stocks. And I think that the absence of light probably helps things from like growing in there. But you will see even with just tap water, if you have a closed like system of tap water and you leave it out for a while, you might see something a little like fuzzy in there. That can happen. Um, so normally I don't see this. This isn't something that I frequently observe. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, if I opened one and it smelled off, then I would toss it. Um, so sometimes you can tell by smell, but uh, maybe this one was easier to, to tell for yellow. So in general, I don't recommend storing dye stocks for months and months and months. Um, it's better to try to mix up the amount that you know you'll use. So, but you know, this can happen. And I probably could have used it. It's going to be in boiling water. It's going to be fine. The boiling water would kill, like, whatever is there. Like, it's not that, like, oh, the yarn would be contaminated. It's just, I don't need to, like, have that in the air. So, um, so we're using juice bottles. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the, the squeeze bottles that I use are much, even though sometimes there can be drips and things, they're much easier to deal with. So, it's fine. We can mix up some yellow. I mean, I don't think it was even 100 milliliters that was wasted. It just is sad. So, I'll check the other ones that I have over there. Um, but it was there for a while. <laughs> but again, like it's one of the studiest areas in my house, which I'm sure contributed. Um, and so there were two little spots of things like floating in there. And so that means that like if each of those is a colony, that means that like out of all the molecules in there, there were like maybe two things that got in there. Because again, things aren't sterile here. But even... Like when I was in a lab, if we wanted to have sterile water, we, we had like sterile filters that we could suck um, water through that would have it sterile and you would have sterile technique. But, you know, when you open the jar, things can come in. And so even like sterile water over time can become unsterile if, as long as you're opening it and stuff. So, um, question, do I dye yarn every day? No. How many hours do I dedicate to dyeing? That is a hard question to answer. Um, I typically and it varies a lot. I might have one or two intense dyeing days a week, and sometimes some days where I'm doing a little bit less. Um, and so it depends on how much footage I film, what kind of project I'm working on. Like something like the Brown, Mixing Browns video took a lot longer because like I sped a lot of things up. So it, it varies. Like, and if I'm dying for say like the Spring Mini Skating Mini Series, which you guys can go pre-order now, pinned comment, um, so like one of those, like I might spend like three, four days on just one video and doing a lot of intensive dyeing because it, depending on how many skeins I'm dyeing or how many steps I'm dyeing about. Um, Randy says it's good to know that the dyes aren't toxic if things can live in there. That doesn't mean that the dyes aren't like, you don't want to mix these dyes with food or anything like that. Um, and so it doesn't mean that you don't want the dice to enter your body, right? Um, but yeah, like mold or 
yeast or and stuff can grow in a lot of places. Ah, okay. Um, can I draw something? The I wish I I should have taken a better picture. I should have taken a picture of it on my phone. Uh, so if the dye has fallen out of solution, you'll see like sometimes see like a film of sediment across the bottom. Think about if you were to. Oh, I know. <laughs> I have something that might give like a little bit of an example. Um, okay, so this is like oil and water and food coloring. Um, that is a lava lamp. So if um, a dye crashes out of solution and isn't well dissolved, then it wouldn't be as thick as this, but you would see like sediment along the bottom. And actually, in this one, we see sediment along the bottom, right? And so that would be the dye crashing out. If in your yellow dye you see a little bit of a black, like sea urchin looking thing, that is something growing in it. Or if you see like sometimes like a white, fuzzy, floaty thing in there, that is likely, um, um, that is a, what I would call like a growy. Um, and so if I were to like shake this up, oh my gosh, this looks awful now. <laughs> uh, okay, there's nothing in here that looks very much like, um, like a growy, but you can still see the sediment along the bottom, that is not something growing. Um, it basically would be, it would feel like a, you'd be like, there's something like floating, but it's not, it's usually like fuzzy in shape. Um, do I have a chart with plant dyes and colored expected with different plants? No, but there are some fantastic books out there that do have that and that show plant colors with different mordants and things like that. So I recommend checking um, your library to see if there's one that you can borrow or even purchasing one. Um, but my personal experience with natural, natural dyes is not vast enough that I have that for myself. Um, but I might have some old book reviews on my website, chemnitz.com, that might recommend some books. Um, but yeah, so I hope that, that this non-dye, I mean, I guess it had food coloring in it example helped. Let me see. I'll go check and see if the other dyes have anything growing in there. And then we'll get back to dyeing some yarn. <laughs> okay, now that I could see um, but the other way you might know is that the dye like smells a little bit like mildewy, you know? Um, but some dyes end up with random chunks and clumps, and so that's not necessarily like something gro like a growy. Okay, but I'm going to go put my mask on and we're going to mix up some um, brilliant yellow. We'll do about a gram. I'm really regretting not taking a picture. And I know now if I set up a yellow dye and just like set it waiting for something to grow. Actually, maybe I should do that with water. for a long time if I actually tried to recreate that. Mm. How much brilliant yellow are we going to use? Mm. 
Okay, about a gram. That's pretty close to an actual gram. Do I have more brilliant yellow dye? Huh, that's something I need to check. mask whenever I'm dealing with dry dye powders and then I take it off when the dyes are in liquid form but other dyers may make other choices which are all fine ultimately it comes down to like what you're most comfortable with okay this is our brilliant yellow dye which is not perfectly dissolved but we're adding it four cups of water. You mix up a bunch of dye socks in the fall, then your subject system started asking up. So you haven't been able to dye yarn in months. Ah, um, I mean, like, if it smells bad, then don't use it. Of course, there's some dyes that do smell more paint-like when mixed up. And so that's, I guess, also important to keep in mind. But, okay. Come on over. I'm bringing a step stool because I have this in the middle. And we wanted our swish and our multi naps. I think I'm going to dip dye all three skeins. I think is the way I want to do it today. So I'm squeezing out as much of the water as I can. can manage easily. And where are my tongs? Here are my tongs. And I'm going to take my phone out of my pocket because I don't want it to fall in a bucket of water. Okay, now the wool to die for skein is a little bit longer than the other ones, but that's okay. All right, I am here. And I can't see it, but there we go. I can see that I'm moving on camera. So we're going to dip dye our 300 grams of yarn into the Brilliant Yellow, which we're doing first. Um, we're doing this color first because I think the yellow tends to strike relatively quickly. But we'll see. We don't have to use all of the honey mustard dye. Ooh. But look at just how, oh, this is so pretty already. Yes, this is doing great. Um, oh man, this could almost just be good without doing the second color. Like the deepest yellow is almost leaning orange on its own. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, but yes, we've almost cleared this. I think I will still follow through. What? 
Oh, that, that's one of the naps. I think I will still follow through and dip dye into our more orange color just for fun today, but it is so pretty. All right, there's two minutes on the timer, but we'll give this, uh, well, I guess what's in the steamer mask, it doesn't hurt if it stays in there longer. I'm just gonna turn it for 10 minutes. We'll give this yellow 10 minutes of time, then we will remove the yarn, flip where the zip ties are, and we'll dip dye into the other color. And then we'll bring out like the full-size catering steam pan and dye um, some other colorways using, finally, then we'll use some more of the peach. But this one is just going to be focusing on the yellow, even though we've got the peaches here. Um, but in theory, it could, yeah, but we'll see how much of a peach tone that golden poppy is when it's saturated. Uh, we'll see. Thank you. The, the dry powder salmon from Jacquard actually smells like fish. It's so strange. Oh, interesting. Oh no, we broke a nail. Yeah, and so, I mean, I don't know if there's like actually a problem using dyes that have like started to spoil a little bit like it shouldn't damage the dyes themselves but like i don't know if there's stuff other stuff in there that like wouldn't won't necessarily feel good for you to be around and so um but i've definitely been guilty of keeping dye stocks for months and months and months sometimes even a year um and yeah But yeah, this yellow is so pretty. So, so pretty. I almost went and picked some daffodils to be like, oh, look at the daffodils from my garden for today. But I didn't because, well, I'm allergic to flowers. <laughs> and so the pollen is so bad. It has been making us all miserable, me and the kids. Mm. It's been wicked. Wicked, wicked. Okay, what did I want to get? I wanted to get. Okay, so, so there was. Do I have. I won't have that picture here. Oh, but maybe I can find it on Instagram. Might be hard. I don't know how to find. This might be faster to find it this way. And then I don't know if most recent will go back 500. Because I feel like one of the first few dialogues ever. Oh, there's no way. Okay, photos. We'll try this way. Um, one of the first dialogues ever, and oh my gosh, was this like in 2017? Could have been 2019. I'm seeing myself take pictures up close. Did that work? No! Nope, that did not work. That's too bad. Um, fine, I'll do this the old fashioned way. But I'm pretty sure funny because I can't tell if one of these one of these might have been the dialogue image um let's see photos downloads
So this picture might have been a dialogue with the like glory of the snow at the bottom and then the daffodils at the top. Um, but this is just another pretty picture of one of my daffodils in my garden. So <laughs> that's what I was trying to do right then. Oh my goodness. Um, you're allergic. Yeah. Pollen is supposed to make people miserable. That's its job. Yeah. Oh my. Yes, it's definitely like misery inducing and uh, pollen has covered everything here even your frog pond oh my gosh and we haven't even hit the point where like because like there's my neighbors have this big like evergreen tree and like when the pollen of that opens up then like our car will be covered in pollen and that hasn't happened yet and then like grass pollen gets me and yeah I get like a brief like relief in the winter <laughs> Mm. Okay, while we're waiting, I'm going to go to a brief break. Um, please, like, go ahead and, like, leave any questions in the chat. I'll answer some when I come back. And when I come back, we'll, um, well, I'll be back before it's time to remove the yarn, probably. So, I'll be back soon.
Hello, I'm back. Um, uh, but poor puppy. He ate like a teaspoon of pumpkin. So that's good. We've got our yellow and golden yarn, which I'm not showing off well. <laughs> uh, I need somewhere to put you. Here we go. So this is, I'm going to still need some place, like, it doesn't have a lot of the peach in it, but it's beautiful. It's just yellow. And it's not going to be perfect for showing off swatches. Um, in general, just because, um, why is it not great for just being a swatch color? Um, it's not perfect as for like the swatches because A, um, we didn't control for like the depth of shade at all, but also, oh yeah, all that color is in our yarn. Um, I'll bring it over when we're going to like shift things, but I'm going to set it aside to cool for a couple of minutes. Um, but the colors also may have mixed, so they may not be like super pure. Okay, that is set aside to cool. And in the meantime, we will add our golden poppy in. And now since this water is nearly boiling, now with this color, it should dissolve better. Which is another reason why sometimes it's worth mixing up colors while fresh, because if the dyes like crash out at all, then it can be hard to see later on. Okay. And then one gram. And so even though in that first dip we did have some tiny amounts of some other colors in there, those probably didn't make a huge impact on the brilliant yellow. And so I'm sure I will forget to mention that in our live stream recap. Okay. We'll do that second color. And then how many skeins do I have left? Okay. Well, we could do, maybe we'll do like a Galileo, a silk, and a stroll and just have it like that. And it would be a one-off for the stroll, but that would be okay. Actually, then that would allow us to have a yarn mop um, as well. And so I think that that's the way I will do the next round. Oh, da, 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 da. I am, so therefore I'm going to go pop one of my remaining strolls in the water with acid when I pre soaking the water. like a long, long grass. Oh, man. No, I was just checking on Indy and like, probably going to need another bath. Oh, poor guy. It's also shedding season, so giving him a bath then means that I'm pulling tons of any fur out of the tub. Oh, poor guy. Okay, let's see. This is still a little warm, but I should be able to shift it. What I don't know... 
Oh, I can bring it over on this side, probably. We'll see if it'll show up. So I know that doesn't show up. Oh, okay, you can see it. Um, phone. I'm gonna take a picture. But, so when you dip dye 300 grams of yarn into um, one gram of dye, the depth of shade that you have becomes a little bit confusing. Because if it was just kettle dyed, then you would say, okay, we have a 0.33% depth of shade. Um, easy peasy. But that's not what we have because we have some areas that are deeper than that because more dye absorbs down here. And then we have some areas that are lighter than that. And so that makes it a little bit confusing. And I can't take a picture. Yay for taking like in progress pictures, Rebecca. Okay, but now what I'm gonna do, even though this is warm, so I'm taking the zip tie and moving it down to the other side. And I could have done this in many, many different ways. We could have decided to not let it go to the deepest side. I could decide to stop it like halfway um, if I wanted to keep more of those pastels, but we're gonna do pretty much a classic dip dye into two colors is my thought. Now, the one thing I don't know is how quickly our golden poppy dye is gonna strike onto the yarn. Um, it makes you happy when I do that little singy thing. <laughs> when I sing while I think. <laughs> it's funny because sometimes I'm not even aware that I'm doing it. Okay. Back up high so we can dip dye. Ooh. So I wonder if this is just going to feel orange or if we're going to feel some of the peachy tones. Because this color was like on the pinker side. Now, the reason why I don't usually dip dye more, much more than uh, 200 grams of yarn at a time is because the pots can get a little crowded, which means that sometimes the dye will strike to like the outer edge of the yarn and not more towards that center area, um, but also just the weight of it. Um, I find keeping my arms above my head to be re like really challenging <laughs> uh, sometimes. And so actually standing on a step stool like this, so that way like the highest my arm is coming is sort of like level with my shoulder. That is way easier to manage as this is getting heavier. And so that is interesting to me. But if this is also very interesting. The golden poppy does not seem to be that pigmented. I wonder if that'll shift over time. But it did seem to strike pretty quickly. Because it has almost all struck. Now at this point, when I'm putting all the yarn in, I have like a little gradient going on in the pot because the deepest yarn with the golden poppy is over at one side and the lightest is over at the other end. Just so that way, sometimes there will be transfer um, from one section to another and this minimizes it a bit, a bit at least. But now, I'm gonna turn off the hot plate and it's gonna, I mean, it's not gonna cool off, but I am gonna unplug it while it's off because I always do that for safety reasons. But oh my gosh, this next to the, the little photo is awesome and i'm gonna get a picture of this before i move it that's so pretty um i'm gonna bring this over to the stove where i'm gonna heat it there for 30 minutes and that has been one of the bigger changes that i've done over the last few years is when I'm doing more of the streaming over here. But so what I think I'm gonna do now is set this up in a kind of weird way. Because this is hot. This is very hot right now. And I am likely to forget that. Um, so I'm gonna add water to our pan 
before I bring it over onto the hot plate. Okay, that was eight cups of water or about one liter approximately. And now the hot plate is not plugged in currently, but this, as some of the heat comes into the pan from that burner that is still warm, the water should help distribute it a little bit. So that way, when I bring the yarn in, the yarn won't scorch on too hot of a pan. Um, you want it to a strawberry farm last weekend? Ooh, that sounds so fun. I want to go strawberry picking. I haven't done that in years. And I believe that's like a June thing out here. All right, so let's see. We've got eight cups of water. And let's do, huh, let's do three tablespoons of white vinegar. And now I'm going to bring over our yarns. I need to remove one of the zip ties because I had two zip ties on the scroll still. And so we're going to be doing three different bases side by side, which is one of my favorite things to do. Oh, dear. Uh, we have Knit Picks Gloss, um, which is the Merino Wool Silk Blend. We have Knit Pick Stroll, which is our Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. This is going to be our one Superwash yarn in here. And then we have Galileo, which is the viscose Merino yarn. And the Galileo is sport weight. The other two are fingering weight. And I will adjust the camera um, in not too long. And so with eight cups of water, We've got some yarn at the surface. We've got some yarn beneath the surface. Uh, we should get like a decent uh, spread of color, but I'm gonna start heating this. Okay, so we do want it to heat up. Let's see, okay, no new comments. And I will sit back down, so please leave any questions you have, but here, I think my plan is to do a lot of patchy brilliant yellow um, and then we will do uh, some peach blush and maybe golden poppy on top because maybe we'll go with the gold oh no or maybe honey mustard I don't know or maybe all three but I am going to move this now let's see Gonna take me a while to see, and I'll zoom in in a moment. Um, so three. Okay running down who I'm using and don't worry I'm going to be shifting the camera around so we're very focused on here which I think I can do almost just here um get your video zoom we don't need to zoom quite that much okay and we're going to go that way and go that way and we will shift this. Yeah. So you'll get a better view. And maybe we'll move. Nope. Nope, that's not who I wanted to move. You. Yeah. Maybe make you a little smaller. Move you up there. There we go. But for now, I'll sit back down while we wait for things to heat up a little bit. They don't need to get that hot. Um, you've got a skin and bears gloss you're intending to experiment with. 
you know, gloss can get speckled. It's just when you have superwash yarn, the colors are going to strike a lot faster. And then on non-superwash yarn, the colors will spread a little bit more. And so I think the comparison of the gloss to the Galileo will actually be really, really fun. Because the viscose from bamboo won't really take up color. And so while wet, the Galileo might look as pigmented as the others. But then once it dries, it's going to feel very shiny, but a lot more pastel than our Superwash Merino. And this immersion setup that I have up here is not, um, it is an immersion setup. Oh, goody, I'm starting to see steam. I'll stand up in a minute. Um, but even though, like, if we were in a kettle, the stroll would suck up dye faster than the other two, no question, and it would be darker. But in this setup, dye that we add at the top isn't necessarily going to travel all the way to the bottom and vice versa. And so the less color that we might see in the end on the gloss and on the Galileo is going to be more for the way that the similar amount of dye looks lighter after it's done. And for the gloss, that's because of that silk. Silk, you need more dye per gram, like more dye, more grams of dye per grams of fiber for the color to feel as vibrant as, say, a wool. Wool absorbs color really, really well. You don't need a lot of dye. Silk, you need more. Um, and so I hope that that makes sense. But we're going to go back to the counter. There we go. But the other thing I'm going to do is because we're seeing steam over here, but this is the side that was warm. We're going to flip this around. And it's okay that the heat isn't going to be even right away. Like, that's not a big deal. Um, not a big deal. But I will sit back down. Yeah, and so uh, I still feel that we're going to go very yellow heavy, even though, like, looking at the thumbnail of the dialogue photo small. I'm feeling a lot more of those peach tones. So maybe I'll go a bit heavier with the peach blush. I haven't decided yet. But this is going to be one of those circumstances that where I'm going to see the dyes in the pan and then see how I'm liking what they're doing and then go from there uh, to decide what and how and the direction that we want to go. Mm. So I don't know if I'm going to go for speckles or if I want to have like bigger sections of color and things like that. So uh, all of that is in flux and I know I'm not in focus. I'm definitely not in focus. <sighs> camera. See, even with autofocus, sometimes the camera's like, oh, you moved your hand. I'm going to focus on that point of your hand. And so then it'll focus like, on something that was close, then I'm like, no, but I'm not close anymore. All right, let's go buy some yarn. Well, and I can reduce that. Oh, that is so pretty. Um, and I can move my set stool. Oh, and I need a thing for yarn mop. I talked about this a little bit earlier, um, but I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, but the yarn mop, I'm going to be wiping my, I'll put the mask pen on, but I'm going to wipe the dye off of my gloves onto this skein here that's off to the side. And my yarn mops I put inside these aluminum pans. I end up I used to buy them at the dollar store, but it ended up being cheaper for me to get a big pack of them from Costco. And I reuse them until they get holes in the bottom. And the holes come from two things. One, just like bending over time, there might be like a point and it develops like a little crack. The second thing is that acid uh, 
uh, will eat away and degrade the aluminum. <laughs> and so therefore, that's the other thing that weakens them over time. All right, I'm gonna go get my respirator back on. And we're gonna have fun. Okay, and I need my gloves, clearly. We may bring some sage leaf into this, we'll see. I don't know how much like speckly I wanna do versus like softer spread. Oh, I never checked if I had more brilliant yellow somewhere. But we're gonna start with some more large splotches of our brilliant yellow. I want the yellow to be the star here. And we're gonna help this spread through. It's semi-repeating, but that's just because I want the color to be all over. And so I don't really have a better way to do that. Now with 300 grams of yarn, I might need to flip this two or three times, it really does depend. But now I'm coming in and this is gonna help move the dyes through more layers. I am noticing that the Brilliant Yellow is a little bit chunky in places. But what the other thing I'm gonna do is after I finish this one, I'm going to sit down for a moment so I can double check that I have more Brilliant Yellow in my stash. Uh, because I will be very upset if I do not. Of the Dharma primaries, this is the color I use the most of. Because, like, if you think about all the colors that require yellow, like, the yellow, you just need more of the yellow. Um... So I'm going to briefly check on this. And today I'm especially fine if we have white left behind, but if we don't, that's also okay. Um, this is how I'm going to check. And we're going to just search my email for brilliant yellow. Um, okay, that was not enough, and then done. Okay, I believe that this is not the, the, I wonder if there's a date on it. That would be handy, but I'm pretty sure that this is the original one that I ordered. Um, so I'm pretty sure that I ordered a new one and that I have that upstairs. All right, let's do some honey mustard. But I'm going to be a little bit like smaller. And it's not going to be like on the same like spot. Ooh, I'm kind of liking what this is doing as like a speckly thing. So we might go with that. Now these colors may spread. Um, and they may spread quite a bit. And that is okay. And especially they might spread when we flip them. But I think I like that as like a little speckle moment. And so that's what we're going to keep it as. Even though know, I know it'll probably spread more on those two stains. Okay, we've got some peach blush. Whoop, that was a little bit heavier than I intended it. Do, 
through. It's like deep in thought. Because some of these can go in the yellow too. But I'm really liking this as little like speckles. And what's funny is that even on the stroll, I'm seeing that the honey mustard is spreading a fair amount. Um, and so that might have me change my mind about what I'm going to do. Because now it's making me want to come in and tap it. Because like the honey mustard kind of like spread. Well, what should I do? No, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. And we'll let this do its thing. And again, the colors might spread when we move it, so it's fine. Let's do a little bit of some sage leaf. And it's not going to be everywhere. But we'll bring in that little bit of green. And see down there, I don't mind having a little bit. And it's going to bring in some pops of blue. I forgot this guy breaks a lot. Um, but is overall like a soft green versus a bright green. And so it shouldn't spread and overwhelm the colorway. Oh, goodness. Uh, how long should we give this? I don't know. I don't know. I am going to reduce the heat on the big one a little bit. Okay, we're going to try to wait about five minutes. I just took off my mask. This is really, really pretty. Um, so what's funny is that like the, the honey mustard is super subtle. It has almost completely disappeared on here. Um, but the peach blush is bringing in a lot more pink. And so that's why like at, when I added the peach blush, part of me was like, ooh, ooh, I want to like soften it, right? I want to spread it out so it's less bright, um, which, Maybe, and we can do this when we flip, because not every color has to be on every side. We can try bringing in some golden poppy instead of some of the honey mustard um, after we move the yarn around and see what it does. I have a feeling that we will end up losing, that we'll end up losing a lot of the white that we have, because I might not add yellows to like the same spots when I flip it. I'm curious. You see also there's a lot of yellow right there. There's a lot of yellow right here. And on the stroll, there's not a lot of yellow. So when we flip and move, because there's still dye in some of those other areas, that might be when we see like more spread all over on our non-superwash skeins versus our superwash. And so then at that point, because if when we flip, if there's a lot of yellow dye that goes all the way through, um, then we might start to see like our center skin absorb more overall. Um, and so, yes, but let's go to, uh, to hello. Um, you died and I did a couple pairs with their muse soft here in the last autumn so far. No pilling. That's great. Oh no, that's not that the eco alpaca pills and stretches a bit because that's so soft. So soft. Maybe, maybe it's not best for socks. Maybe it's better for like lace or something. Because I feel like most of what I make are lace and hats. <laughs> lace and hats. That's what comes off of my mules uh, the most often. Um, what else did I want to share? Okay. I am going to plug two things again. I'm going to plug 
my uh, SMSMS pre-orders, and the Nitpick Silk Yarn Sale, because those are the two things I am promoting right now. And this video isn't sponsored by Nitpicks, but I am a Nitpicks affiliate, and so that means I do earn commissions, um, and so I guess that is my incentive, therefore, to share the link. But I genuinely uh, use Nitpicks Yarn all the time, all the time. Um, so Sam says you're allergic to wool, so you only you only use superwash alpaca, but you use it in a shawl, so pulling shouldn't be much of a problem. Yeah, I think that uh, things that are more likely to to see pilling and to experience pilling are when you have sweaters, because the rubbing, I guess, of your arm with your side, you're likely to see pilling there, and socks, just from the again the wear, the more wear and tear. Muse, it's funny, I am not, I have maybe like one skein, and maybe I've dyed one skein, I think of Muse sock yarn. I think that it is a nice sock yarn, but it's more expensive than Stroll, so therefore I haven't, um, oh no, I'm not, I'm not seeing all the chats. Okay, now I can see more. Um, the, what was I saying? The, so Muse is more expensive, and so therefore I just don't buy it as much. Um, the sock yarn, but I like the thicker one a lot. Um, this is a weird question, but is it possible to get the SMS and this yarn caked up? I think no. I think that might be really challenging for me to manage um, with the way that like I wrap and pack everything, unfortunately. Like I can unravel soft blanks if people want, and then I'd relax it to like relax the twist. Um, that I can do, but kicking up all the mini skeins and stuff would take a while. And um, because I, I tend to like pack, and then the way I pack and ship, it would be hard to keep track of, of what it is. So I'm sorry about that. Your yarn winder doesn't handle small skeins very well. Um, oh, funny, my countdown. <laughs> so I have a countdown on Instagram. Yeah, because um, I'm not sure how well, because like my like ball winder also, uh, it does okay with minis, um, but it's still like the harder, the hardest part. Um, yeah, it, it would be easier probably with those to, to do them by hand um, with a Swift, uh, if you have a Swift. But, I mean, 20 grams are easier than 10 grams. Um, that, like, the, the ball winder can handle that a little bit better. Uh, there was the one year that I did, um, for Hanukkah, I did cake dyeing. Um, and I had, like, 100 grams, like, 50 grams, 10 grams. And so I think I was able to manage it, but yeah. No, it never hurts, it never hurts to ask. I will say, oh, poor Indy. My, uh, bark, 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 bark. Uh, my ball winding service is one of the banes of my existence. Not because I mind doing it, um, but people buy it by itself all the time and it's incredibly frustrating uh hold on a moment hey. Anyway, has it been? I forgot that the, yeah, it's been a little over five minutes, so we'll try to flip it. Um, the reason why it's the bane of my existence, the ball winding service, because I offer like $3 per 100 grams, all wind yarn purchased in my shop into a cake. But people buy that listing all the time without buying any yarn. <laughs> and so then I have to cancel the order. And so sometimes people realize it when they buy it and then they're like, oh, um, after they purchase it, then they ask me to cancel it. 
but and no one's ever argued when I said that, oh, I need to cancel it, but it's just weird. Um, Cause like I've had, I've even updated the title to be like, you know, ball lining add on, like to wind on a hundred grams of yarn, you must purchase Kenneth Creations yarn or your order will be canceled or something. I made images with that too. Okay, we still got yellow. I'm gonna push on, ooh, okay. Okay, creamy peach. Okay, I think some of our speckles might be staying in place. It's just some of that yellow. Well, that is happy. Okay, we're gonna flip all at once. Oh, that's not that much yellow. What's left? Okay, we will likely need to flip the yarn a couple of times. Um, just because uh, we're gonna want to expose the like interior and sometimes like some part of the yarn can be underneath other parts and so we wanna deal with that too. And you did a, there's like an emoji thing next to, so I can't see the lowest chat well on the iPad. Okay, my respirator is going back on. So I am muffled, so Sam will be able to read that better in like a minute or two. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, and so once again, we're gonna go heavy, or heaviest, with our brilliant yellow. And the reason why we're doing this versus starting with a tonal, even if we end up getting a lot of yellow all over, all over the yarn, is that I want there to be differences in the depths of shade of the yellow. So even if the colors end up spreading enough and so then we have it like a little bit all over, which is fine, it's just sometimes with yellow, it can be hard to see that depth of shade difference, you know? Because sometimes um, some of the colors that might, sorry, I'm rubbing my hands on the yarn mop. Okay, because sometimes some of the, uh, yeah, just the difference between like a super saturated yellow, it's not that dark, um, especially when you compare it to uh, something else. So like the difference between like having a super saturated royal purple versus a pastel uh, and so, but hopefully we'll get some of those nice differences as I poke this through. And the thing I like about this is that these color segments aren't all the same size. That's sort of my personal preference anyway. But you know, we can put a little bit down there. Like that doesn't hurt. I just, I like things, even though there is gonna be slightly more repeating quality to this, I like things that maybe aren't necessarily like super pooly. But I'm adding some of the yellow down just to again have some fun depth of shade differences. Okay, this time let's do a little bit of golden poppy. Curious how this one may speckle. Like, is it going to feel peachy or what? Because it is definitely more pink than honey mustard, which I am going to use some on this side as well. Because why not? I liked what it did. we have a lot less white than what we had last time. 
And some of these colors are spreading a lot in our West Speckle, even on the stroll, just because of how they're striking, which is fine. Which is fine. Okay. I'm curious for comparison. Oh no, that was a lot. Whoops. Uh, the peach blush is definitely much more pink compared to the golden poppy. I do see a difference uh, on the yarn. Which is nice. I like actually a lot speckling with colors that are close to one another but aren't quite the same. And one of the reasons why I really end up enjoying that is it adds more dimension in the final yarn because sometimes you might not be able to pick out those color differences but the color differences are there and so yeah i think it just helps a lot uh versus like sometimes when you're just speckling with one yarn there's something i don't know flat feels weird but that's the best way i have to describe it and so the same thing with having a color that fits with the story, but is different. And so I'm actually really glad to have the sage leaf come in because it's much more of a contrast with all these like subtle, more orange colors. But a lot of these colors did look rather, um, rather yellow. Oh, that was a lot. That was on the back of my finger. Um, a lot of the colors looked really, really yellow when we originally swatched them. And I'm pointing that out mainly because here they're feeling, I mean, the peach obviously is feeling peach, but they're feeling much, much more, um, much more pink and orange because they're concentrated. Okay, I am going to set a timer for five minutes because that seems to be a good amount of time and I'm turning off the heat from our kettle uh, and I am going to, I guess, leave you guys on the screen so you can watch as things maybe spread out, maybe don't, but I'm going to bring it in the outside real quick. Pumpkin. Yes. Oh, that's such a good boy. Oh, that's such a good boy. 
Oh, I'm so happy. Yes. Yes, good boy. Good boy, eat pumpkin. Good job, Bobby. Good job, baby. Let's go back to your crate. Okay? Good boy. He ate some pumpkin. That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I left you on versus sending you to the like music. Uh, but yeah, I'm like, okay, phew. He ate something. That is good because he threw up all the water he had this morning, which was a lot. And it was all over the rugs five minutes before the stream started. <laughs> Poor baby. Um, but yeah, his tummy is well, I guess he's gotten older is super sensitive so like this happens time to time and so I don't know what he, if he ate something outside or if he has been eating too much of his fur that he's shedding and so therefore he's like uncomfortable so poor guy um does every pet mom have a pet mom voice <laughs> um thank uh, Dee, thanks for joining Pet dads do too, yeah. Oh man, but yeah, especially like, it's funny because I definitely use like my strict mom voice with him a lot, and then I feel like bad, but right now he's just not feeling well, and oh, and like, yeah, I just, poor baby, poor baby. So we'll, we'll see if he like, perks up like this afternoon but he's still not interested I only put like a quarter of his normal breakfast in his bowl and he's completely uninterested in it still but eating pumpkin is great because that helps whichever way the digestive things are going with dogs canned pumpkin is great so I'm 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 glad that he ate something besides like his antiacid that antiacid that like, we give him sometimes but i don't think we specifically have any nausea medicine but yeah he didn't want to go outside so uh, single camera i'm proud of myself for my restraint because, like, I don't mind if some of the speckles end up on top of, say, the yellow. Like, that's not a problem. But my plan is to, I didn't want the whole thing to turn orange, was what I didn't want. Okay, so we're going to shift them, like, one at a time. And actually, coverage is pretty good. I mean, there was a lot of yellow that came out there. Because well, again, I'm not mad at white, but what we might do right now is just add a little bit more of the speckles and then call it a day. But what I'm doing as I sort of flip it is I'm trying to open up the inside and see areas that have just had less color overall. So I think I'll put my mask on and we're gonna speckle here, but I don't think we're gonna add more of the brilliant yellow because I don't think it needs it. Um, and then I'll show off how our yarn mop is doing. I like to move the zip tie in with the yarn mops as well because that helps me wipe the colors on a different spot. And so that's why I like to do that. But oh man, I missed and I know like I was exhausted and overwhelmed and like, which is why I did a combo. Whenever I do a two month long live stream, it's more of like, I don't know when I can stream again. Oh, cause February break. Cause the stream was at the very end of February. And so, um, 
yeah, so you can tell I'm exhausted when like that happens. But I need to do another like mega live stream that is akin to what I do for the Chemnitz patrons over on Patreon. Um, and so one of the perks that I do on Patreon for um, certain levels is that there's a behind the scenes live stream that I do every month. Um, and that patrons get to like join in and that it's behind the scenes because I'll be filming an episode of Die Pet Weekly um, and it'll just show like me filming the clips and it's before it's even been edited. Sometimes videos come out soon, sometimes they come out a year later, <laughs> two years later. Um, but it's fun, so you get a little like, it's like the slow TV and so a lot of times, because a lot of times there's like Wait, what? Oh, I think I just did the honey mustard. But I don't know, actually. Um, let's see if this is different. Well, it doesn't matter. We'll just go ahead. Uh, but it's it's fun because it's fun for me because it's fun to like slowly talk more about like some of the things and decisions that I'm making as I'm going through the whole like dying process. Which, in general, those are things that I like to share in my videos anyway. <laughs> so it's not that like I'm hiding that, but there's sometimes like when I'm doing a lot of speckling like this, like I would put, like, normally if I was pre-filming this, I would do like one side in real time and then the rest becomes a time lapse. Because, I mean, we'll be honest, like it gets long and there's a lot of pauses as I go in Darth Vader mode. With this, I think someone called me Bane in the comment section today, and that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> I, I got a kick out of out of that. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be a Batman supervillain. Um, what was I gonna say? But yeah, so it's it's something I do. But then maybe like every once in a while. I like to do a big episode where I'm working on filming multiple episodes of Die Pot Weekly, uh, mainly because I feel like hanging out and chatting, and yeah, and so that means like you get to see like what it looks like uh, unedited and then edited, um, and I think that's just fun. So yeah, I think we're we're pretty good here. Um, I'm actually really really happy with this. So. Which, I mean, okay, but I shouldn't sound so surprised, but our yarn mop is soft and doesn't have a ton of color on it, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to go put this in a steamer basket and steam set this for 30 minutes. Um... And this I'm also going to heat for 30 minutes, but I think we'll wait maybe five minutes or so, and then maybe I'll add some more acid, um, but I'm not like that stressed about it. Okay, I need another pan. be washed. Um, so I'd like to show you all. Oh, there's one right here. I'll show you guys the dip dye yarn that we did. Oh, it is so pretty. There's a hint of some yellow left in the dye bath, but I'm going to keep the yarn out now. And I love it. There was a hint of some transfer of some of the, what did we use? We used the golden poppy onto some of the yellow, but we still have the yellow and some of those orange notes. And I think that this is beautiful. So I'm going to set this aside so it can cool completely. And then we'll wash it. 
And I'm going to wash it off camera. Uh, I just saw the like yarn I did at the very beginning with those like bright neon hints. And that was really fun. But my goal today, one of my goals today was to show how you can do a lot of different types of colorways, starting with one inspiration. And so one thing that we could have done here, and so it's another idea I had, um, would have been to take the brilliant yellow like we did, but to do something similar with that peach blush to really like work it through. But actually, maybe the golden poppy would have been better to do than the peach blush, and then to have the peach and the other colors be the speckles. So there's a lot of variety that you can do. I'm just going to clean up a little bit. are going. <laughs> I was like, I try to clean up a little bit as I go, but someone asked at the beginning like how like often if I dye yarn every day and sometimes I do, but I try to do like most days if I'm filming an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, uh, I'll do multiple videos at once. Um, and so, let me move, move this more. Uh, and so then I will be doing, you know, I, maybe I'll have like one thing in a kettle, um, and I'll be kettle dyeing something, and then maybe I'll do something on the countertop that's going to sit for a few days. And so I try to layer things with different types of pans as much as I can, so that way I can, like, well, one thing is waiting for 30 minutes, then I can be working on something else. But if the wait time between a flip is like 10 minutes, I'm usually not filming something else at the same time, unless it's in the kettle and like I would have done that first, if that makes sense. Aw, well, you'll be able to watch the replay. Sorry, you forgot. Uh, your sister will make dies with the garage door open. Oh my god. <laughs> that would that would stress me out. Um, although, like, I guess no one has ever asked when I've been dying things outside. The one times people have stopped and asked things was when I was um, trying to get pictures of myself doing self-portraits in a sweater. Someone asked if I was doing a TikTok. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> I'm just trying to take pictures of myself, which is really hard when you're trying to like deal with angles and you have a camera on a tripod, like that's not as fun um, as like having someone take your picture. But um, I tend to have a better idea of what I want in my head. And uh, Keith would help. He would help, but yeah. <laughs> and then the kids, if the kids were taking the pictures, they'd cut my head off. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. I'm gonna be heading out soonish. Um, because there is something else I'm hoping to film today before the kids come back. And then I think Lucas has baseball tonight. I don't know if it's going to rain. Baseball season just started. I'm, yes, both kids are playing, but Keith is um, writer's coach. So that'll be, at least like then Keith will have to be at everything um, writers at. Um, oh, good. Uh, da, 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 da. Hopefully we get the chicken for Indy, and so then I can bake that. Your neighbors are used to people in masks. Your son is always tweeting skis in the garage. Yeah, I mean like the like the big like respirator masks. Like get those at Home Depot. So if someone's woodworking or something, um, better late than never. Oh no worries. I mean I meant to. I meant to over the weekend to post the like dialogue image 
and not just yesterday. Um, but yes, life, life happens. And it was a three-day weekend for us because in Massachusetts, Patriot's Day is a day off. Like, Patriot's Day, businesses are closed. There's no school. And the main reason for that is the Boston Marathon, um, which goes like through, like we live very near the route. Um, and so like, you can't go from one side of my city to the other because like you can't cross some of the major roads. And so, yeah, so everything shuts down for the marathon. Um, and it's a fun day. We always go and watch the marathon. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna go. I, Monday was hard for me this year. It's a 10 year anniversary of the tragic one. And so, and like we were there, like, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going there. Um, <laughs> anniversaries of like traumatic things are hard. Um, but I make it a point to um, always go and still spectate at every year because I'm not gonna have some horrible people uh, make me scared to do that. So uh, that's what I'll say there. But I think I think I've talked about that before. But anyway, uh, anyway, Marathon Monday is a wonderful, wonderful holiday. But a lot of other places and like other states, like it's not a day off. So like it, that can be like confusing. And so yeah, thanks, thanks. Um, I mean, like we were like fine. It's just. Yeah, someday, maybe someday I'll tell the whole, whole story, the whole story of our experience um, 10 years ago. But your department head wants to run the Boston Marathon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's a hard, it's hard to get a spot to run because um, there's two ways that you can, like an individual can run. They can qualify for it, which means you have to have done another marathon within a certain time, like they're within like, you know, there's a max time that you have to like get under that to then qualify for it. Or, um, and the way that, I don't know what percentage are charity runners, or a lot of charities will get a certain number of bibs and so you can sign up to raise money for that charity. Um, and then different ones have different like requirements of like, okay, how much you actually have to raise and like if you're on the hook for the whole thing, or if it's just like, hey, try to hit this amount. Um, and so there's a lot of like, when my friends have done it, they've always done it running for a particular organization. Um, and so like Museum of Science or Boston Children's and things like that. Although I do know people who have like qualified, qualified. Um, who runs the Salt Lake Marathon every year? Okay, yeah. Um, and I have no interest in running a marathon. I do run, well, okay, I haven't, we haven't signed up for it in a while just because of timing and then we forget, but we've run, I've run the BAA 5K twice. Um, once when Lucas was six months old and then once when Ryder must have been just over a year old because I wasn't gonna train for it when he was three months old. Um, but Keith has run it for many years. Um, he's run that many years and he did, during the pandemic, he did the like, he did like a medley at home with like a 5K, 10K, and half marathon. And then they just mailed the medals. <laughs> it's like you do it on your own and submit your times. Uh, but yeah, it's a big, it's a big day. And like I grew up, um, like my grandfather lives right next to the, the route. And so I grew up like cheering the marathon, like as a little kid. And then um, I went to Wellesley, and so, which the marathon goes right, right by, like, um, the campus, and so that was a really big deal um, to, like, it's really famous as, like, the scream tunnel, because all the students come out and just cheer, and it's about the halfway point of the marathon, and so it's a huge pick-me-up. Um, I think for runners, like a lot of runners have said they have their best mile there because of just the like constant cheering. Because like there's spectators like all along the route cheering, but I think it's just like dense when you have like the, the students there. <laughs> but 
but yeah, I, I personally have no interest in running anything longer than a 5K. I think, and I haven't run for a while, um, but like my like happy spot would be is like a mile and a half is like the distance of run I enjoy. I'm more into like walking and stuff, but um, or like if I'm pushing like two two and a half was like my sweet spot, and so like the 5K was not my happy distance. Um, but I think the last one I did, which of course, oh my god, it's been a really long time. I guess we had the like I was gonna sign up this year. Um, but then we waited too long and it sells out really fast. Um, we could do a different 5K. I just like the Boston one because, like, you go over the marathon finish line and stuff. Then, um, yeah. Oh, I even asked my parents if they want to watch on Monday. We live downtown. Anyway, I'm babbling and I should be signing off probably because <laughs> I should eat lunch and. Yeah, but I got distracted by like lots of marathon. But anyway, thank you all for joining me today as I dyed, how many did we do? Three, I mean, if with the yarn mop, four different color ones, um, inspired by daffodils and trying to let yellow be the star. Uh, the goal was for yellow to have its moment. And I think that we've got some really beautiful yarn. And so I'm also really excited to see what you create. So please share the yarn you dye inspired by daffodils, they're over here, with me on Instagram using the Chemnitz Dye Along hashtag. And you can also share them with me on Facebook. Um, I will have as one of the pinned posts is the dialogue photo, so just reply with a photo comment. Uh, it's easier for me if you uh, submit individual photos versus photo collages, because then I try to um, share as many as I can in the recap. And of course, if you want to share things privately, you can always like message me. I don't, it, there used to be a time that I was like, oh yeah, just send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook. I don't always get notifications for those anymore because there's too many. So sometimes I might not see that. Um, and so uh, the, it's, it's unfortunate that you can't add photos like on YouTube because the best way to get my attention is like a YouTube comment because I try to look through those and look for questions so I can reply. Um, and so, yeah. But anyway, um, do that. And yeah, pre-order your S and 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 too many S's yarn. <laughs> uh, when you shop with, in my shop, that's one of the, one great way to help support the content here. Of course, the biggest thing you can do is subscribe and turn on notifications. When you engage with the videos, not only is that free, um, but that is the best way, the best way to support the content here. And um, as I go out of focus, because I'm moving too much, I'm going to adjust it manually, and then it'll remember where I am. Well, oh, that was exposure. Nope, nope, that's not what I wanted to adjust. I wanted to adjust the focus, uh, and then I can go back to auto. Um, Subscribing is the biggest way you can help support the, the channel. And I know some people have said, like, oh no, I didn't get a notification. Uh, the more you engage and like the videos, the more likely, even with like that bell rung with your notifications on, the more likely YouTube is to actually like let you know um, that a new video is out. Um, and so that is good. But I always post like pre-filmed videos on Tuesdays and Fridays, and sometimes we get some other ones. Uh, I have to finish filming and editing the Dicop PS for this month. But there's a lot of like really exciting stuff coming up and I can't wait to show it to all of you. So I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for joining me.